Welcome to my tutorial for 1942 Joint Strike. And this is for the Xbox 360. This was a downloadable game. And it may be on some other platforms. It might be on PS3 as a downloadable, but I'm not sure. It took me around an hour and 14 minutes to beat. But I did lose 16 minutes when I had a good run of the game on my second full attempt. And um, the game crashed on the Xenia emulator. So I'm actually playing it here on the Xbox 360 console itself. It's a $10 game. And I would say it's worth it if you like these kind of shooters. But it probably took me a little bit under an hour to beat when you consider that I had the game crash in the middle when I was having a good run. I probably would have beat it on my second full attempt. On my first full attempt of the game, I made it to the final boss. The game has limited lives and no continues. It's about 30 minutes long um, You know, if you don't fail. But if you lose all your lives, then you have to start the game over. So the main challenge is really that final boss fight. And I would recommend trying to get to the final boss with as many lives in stock as you can because it can be a pretty tough fight. Now here I'm, I'm showing the, the full thing unedited. So I'm just showing you some of the basics here. You can see I don't even have to read this out to you, but it gives you some of the basics. And you have... Um, you know, one of the big things is the closer you are to an enemy, when you kill it, the bigger multiplier you get. So you can get a 16x multiplier by being point blank on the enemies when you kill them. And this is pretty fucking nice. When I learned this, I was able to get several free lives just out of points. You get a free life every 500,000 points. And I really upped my score a lot by keeping in mind trying to kill enemies at point blank range when possible. But don't sacrifice your health in order to do so. You can take a few hits, but it's not worth trying to, you know, point blank enemies and, and lose life because you need to also do well. So you can kind of balance that out. That's uh, part of being successful in the game. This is on the default difficulty, which is called Slick Sleeves, and it's where the game defaults. But there are easier settings, too, if you're having trouble, but this is going to be for that uh, default difficulty, which is pretty much, I guess, like the normal setting for the game. So another big recommendation is going to be you really want the laser weapon whenever possible that I have here. So with the laser and with all the weapons, the way it works is you have two power-ups for each weapon. So if you grab the laser power-up, um, you know, try to grab it a second time to get the double laser power, which, which gives you a, a more powerful stream of lasers, or maybe there's more of the lasers. Either way, you'll kill shit a lot faster. That's the important thing. So the reason I recommend the lasers for the entire game is because yeah they don't have a wide, a wide shot that can take out enemies in a in a uh, you know in a wide area. But if you're fast enough, you can move left to right and take shit out anyway and cover those areas by moving left to right and strafing a lot left to right. Uh, but the reason you want the extra power that the lasers give you is because you can take out bosses a lot faster. And bosses are one of the biggest challenges of the game. Though like you know none of them are really that hard I would say for a shooter. But the final boss quite hard and if you don't get there with enough lives you know unless you learn all the patterns perfectly it's going to be pretty dense pretty difficult so the idea for me was to try to get there with as many lives as i could get you know bring with me since there are no continues now keep in mind whenever you see a swarm of red planes take all the red planes out and if you take that group out usually you get some kind of power up occasionally there's like two one-ups in the game that I found, so that's two extra lives you can get, and you want every fucking extra life you can get, obviously, because, you know, the only other ones you're going to get are going to be off of points. You know, 500,000 points will get you a one-up, which is an extra life, but, um, you know, you want to kill those red groups of enemies, and there's a few, there's like two of them in the game, at least, that'll give you a one-up that I found, but a lot of times you get health back and things like that, so here's the first boss, and I'll explain that more as the game goes on, but... For this guy, the main part to take out seems to be the center part, and you can see it's flashing so you know when it's taking damage, but it seems like taking out that center part of the plane is going gonna, is gonna to be what kills the boss. I don't think you need to take out the left and right parts. It seems like it takes most of its damage in the center, so you can take out the left and right parts on the wings if there's some of those guns are giving you trouble. You, you can kind of um, take them out if you want. You know, you can decide on that. But the laser does kill shit pretty fast, as you can see. So now, the way this works, this is an escape sequence. And I believe it's like an optional bonus stage. I believe if you want, you can just crash and die, and you'll you'll beat this stage or this section. 
and you know you won't lose an actual life so I mean usually I just go until I, I die and I don't think I lasted that long this time because I didn't have much health left over I played pretty sloppy on the first stage but good enough I mean I didn't lose an actual life because uh, you know once I die in this little segment um, you just go on to the next stage and you don't you don't lose a real life so it is deceiving but really, you're trying to dodge the planes. The main thing is try to grab the medals while you're surviving. You can get a few extra points. But a lot of the medals are not that worth grabbing. It's not worth going out of your way to grab the medals most of the time. But if you're going to grab them, I like to grab the star-shaped ones that are worth 1,000 points each. And it'll show up on the screen when you grab them. I like to go for those because, you know, 1,000 points each is not too bad. And you may get more points if you have multipliers active. I still don't understand how the multiplier, the uh, multiplier, like works or whatever. Um, I just know that it says 16x when you point blank kill an enemy, and if you're a little farther away, it's a lesser multiplier. But I, I don't really know how that works. I'm not sure if your score after that multiplies for a small period of time, or I'm guessing you're just getting a score bonus on that one kill, a 16x multiplier on that one kill that you got it on. You know, I th I'm guessing that's how it works, but. I didn't look into it. You see, I almost have 200,000 points already, which once I hit 500,000, we'll get my first uh, one up from points. So I still have the lasers at this point. Get close to these bigger mid-sized enemies and try to take them out fast. When you're closer, it seems to kill them faster, like, you know, what a lot of these games. Plus, like I said, if you can point blank the big guys, you get a lot of points because you're getting a 16x multiplier on, on those guys, and, they're, and killing them is worth more points than a small plane, I assume. So you're probably getting a lot of points off of those those point blank kills on the medium guys. Try to do that when you can. But like I said, don't get yourself killed to do it. You can take a few hits. You have a health bar on the upper left, as you see, and next to that is how many lives you have. The bottom left, it shows how many um, homing missiles you have, which right now I have eight. And to the bottom right of that, it shows how many bombs I have. The bombs are like a screen clearing bomb. And you won't take damage when you ignite them. So it's good to use them when you're about to get hit to save your ass. And they're also pretty good on bosses. I try not to use them too much on the, the levels themselves unless I'm in bad shape. The homing missiles can also get you out of some bad situations too. You know, not even just using one. Sometimes I spam them and just waste them all up if I'm about to die. So I can clear the screen real fast and maybe grab a health power up or something like that. Because uh, grabbing the health can keep you alive. You want to try to keep... You know, you, you want to try to keep from dying for as long as possible. So here, grab the laser. I think I already had two of them, so I was fully powered up. After two, you just get a 1,000 points for them, which is really not anything to go out of your way for if you already have it powered up. There are other weapons. I also chose the Mosquito Plane because it said that it had more health and more power. I'm guessing it does more damage, and it has a little bit more health. So maybe it's not as fast as the other planes. I'm not sure. They all have different stats in the beginning. But this is what I went through, and I, you know, went with, and I... Almost beat the game on my first try using the Razer V2 Pro Controller. It's a PS5 controller. The D-pad is mechanical, which is actually pretty fucking nice for uh, for this shooter. You know, I, I wasn't sure how that controller would handle with shooters, but it felt very good for this game. But I switched over to my modded stick that I use for shooters most of the time. It's a Samitsu LS61 stick modded into a uh, Real Arcade Pro Hori controller. And it's really good for shooters, so I ended up using that, and that's what I'm using here when I beat the game. And this is on the actual Xbox 360. They have footage of me playing on the Xenia emulator, and it ran nice. Pretty comparable to what I'm playing now. Now, maybe there's a little bit less input lag in the 360 console version. It was kind of hard for me to, to confirm that, but the big issue was that it crashed on me once on the Xenia emulator. And after that, I was like, well, you know, fuck it. I don't really want it to crash on me again, so I'll just pay the 10 bucks and, and download the game on the actual 360. So here I kind of recommend focusing most of your firepower on the middle part of this 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 boss, which is where what's what's going to kill it. You know, it has a few forms where you have to take out multiple middle parts, and every time you destroy part of the middle, another another part emerges. So you have to destroy three or four different parts, I think, and then it kills the boss. This, the, the turrets on the side seem to grow back, so you don't necessarily want to spend too much time trying to take them out. Focus most of your time and attention on the middle part to try to take it out fast. Of course, use your bombs if you need to. If you're about to get hit, um, you know, use them like a split second before you take damage. That's a good way to use them. And, um, you know, you have your homing missiles, which you can kind of spam to do some extra damage too. I try to save them for, you know, emergencies usually, but sometimes I'll, I'll use them up on the bosses too, you know. You can get some extra damage that way. 
Now this game also has something I didn't I didn't speak of yet. It has a charge shot. So what you can do is you can hold down the fire button and charge up your shot for a powerful shot. Now I did use the charge shots my first playthrough, but you know, and of course it requires a constant mashing of the button because if you want to fire regularly, you have to mash the button to fire fast and then you hold it to do a charge shot. And what I didn't really like about that is that I had to constantly mash the whole time, which was kind of annoying. So what I did was I was using a Hori Rap 4 controller and I, I, I set the turbo on it. So what that means is I'm getting a rapid fire rate, but I'm not able to do charge shots at all. So I did this whole playthrough without any charge shots. I don't necessarily recommend doing that, but maybe try both ways like I did. Try it the first time, and you know where you can use your charge shots. And if you do have a rapid fire control, which most players for the Xbox 360 are not going to have a rapid controller available, so you know most people aren't going to be playing it this way. But it doesn't seem to really increase your damage when you use a rapid fire controller. The fire rate on this game seems pretty, pretty limited, pretty capped off. I didn't feel like I was getting faster damage really with the turbo rate, but it's hard to tell. Um, you know, it seems similar to when I was mashing as far as the damage output, but I didn't have to hold, but I didn't have to tap the button, so that was good. But of course, I lost the ability to do my power shots, which I, I think I could have beat some shit faster with a few charge shots. Now, when you do clear out those groups of red planes, you'll notice that it usually starts off as either a bomb or a health power up. But if you wait a moment, it will change into, into another thing. So let's say it starts off as a bomb icon, which is a B. If you wait a few seconds, you'll see it turn to a green cross or plus symbol, which is a health symbol. So if you need health back, you know, wait it out a little bit and use your homing missiles to clear out some enemies so you can grab it in time. Because if you, if you don't grab it fast enough, it's going to switch back and then you're going to get the thing you didn't want. It is good to get bombs, but I always prioritize health because I want to stay alive as long as possible. So if my health is a little low, I always grab the health. I always want to have like my, my health topped off. That's one of the main things I do. Now, sometimes you'll grab these power shots that are temporary like this, and they blow shit up pretty good. And it will clear out the bigger enemies easier and, and take out groups of enemies. But it's only for a brief period, and then you'll go back to whatever your, your weapon was that you had prior to getting that. It's only for, like, maybe 15 seconds or whatever it is. Not too long. So this game only has five stages. And like I said, it's only 30 minutes long. So if you do fuck up, um, you know, it's probably not going to be super difficult for a lot of players to at least get to the final boss. Now, I did hear when I read a review of the game that the reviewer was unable to beat the final boss even on the easiest mode. So it's going to depend on your experience with shooters, you know. If you do play through a lot of these types of shooters, then you may beat the game on your first or second try, you know, like I did. But if not, it may take a little while. But I think, you know... The main challenge for a lot of players is going to be trying to beat the final boss. So the biggest thing to make it easier for yourself is to try to get there and, you know, with, with some lives in, in, in reserve. So try to learn, you know, try to get used to the scoring system where you kill guys at point blank range so that you can rack up more points. And at least that way you can get maybe two one-ups or so out of points alone, which is going to help you a lot. And then there's also two one-ups you want to know where they are. You'll see me grab them in this playthrough if you pay attention. See, here's one right here in that group of um, the red ships I just destroyed. So be sure to get that one. As a general rule, always try to clear out all the red, the red enemies that appear. Because they usually come in a swarm, and usually killing that swarm, if you kill everyone in that swarm, will give you a power-up. And I think it's always the same power-ups, depending on what swarm it is. I think the game doesn't change. So here you see I have six lives already. One of those was I got from 500,000 points. I got a one-up. So I'm in pretty good shape. And uh, I just got a one-up that I picked up as well, which was really nice. Health is not too great, so I may lose this life soon. So this guy's a little tricky because you have to take out quite a few parts. So it's one of the harder bosses probably. It gets a little tight down here in this lower area because you got those stupid fucking icons on the bottom left that cover your ship. Now, another thing I learned the hard way about this game is that your hitbox is the same size as the fucking uh, plane, pretty much. So, uh, I thought it was going to be kind of like, you know, bullet hell style where the middle of the ship, you, you know, only the middle of the ship could take damage, a small speck. But even if anything even grazes your wing, you get hit. So, your hitbox, your hitbox in this game is huge. 
And the hitbox is the area where you take damage on your ship. So on this game, it's pretty much the whole plane takes damage if anything grazes it. So um, because it can get a little dense, that, that can make it, you know, harder. But the fact that you can take multiple hits per life makes the game, you know, relatively easy for me because, you know, I play so many games, uh, extremely hard arcade games where it's one-hit deaths and shit like that. So um, after being conditioned with so many of those games, you know, this is really not too bad, even though I definitely had some fuck-ups. It didn't take me too long to get through. But the main thing is you want to keep moving left to right so that the cannon can't get a fix on you because it does these charge shots. And you'll see us. Uh, you'll see some, you know, shit coming out of the front of the cannon when it's about to shoot off a shot. So just move away. It's just a little tricky because you got all those bullets and shit going on while you're trying to stay away from the front of the cannon. But that's the main thing with that. You know, and of course, anything you need to use like bombs or homing missiles to survive. But always try to take out these groups. See, I got a laser, which is good. The idea for me is to try to keep the laser at all times, but sometimes I lose it. Now, if you do die, your weapon will be on screen for a brief period, so try to grab it again if you can. Because you really don't want to lose the laser if you can help it. It'll, it'll um, keep you alive more than it doesn't, you know what I mean? The more time you spend without the laser, the more compromised you are, really, I mean. Because the laser is just so good. And it takes out shit so much faster than the uh, spread weapons and shit. So, you know, it is recommended. You'll see I now have over a million points. So now, of course, I got my second one up from points. This part's kind of tricky. Try to stay in, in between. But remember, your whole ship is the is the hitbox. See, I tried to fit between those bullets like you would in a bullet hell. Doesn't work. So... I took a lot of damage there from trying to do that. I think that's where I started to realize that the hitbox in this game is the whole ship. So, which, which is in line with how these games always work. The 1942 series has always been like that. Uh, but, you know, this is, of course, a more modern version of those games. So I thought maybe they, you know, they changed the hitbox. But no, they, they kept it the same. But there's definitely a lot of action on screen. But like I said, knowing where those two one-ups are, knowing about killing things at point blank, especially large enemies, is going to rack you up a lot of points. So by knowing that, you should be able to get more points and more one-ups, which will at least help you have more lives for the end of the game when you get to that final boss. I did not play the final boss clean at all, but I mean, I had, I got there with four lives, and I think I died twice. I think I had two lives left, but... Um, you know, had I at least not had a few lives in reserve, I wouldn't have beaten it that time. I do have a strategy for the final boss, but it's a very rough strategy. But it did work. You know, try to clear out all that shit, because if you get that little icon I just got, that's a full health power up. So if you get that, you get all your health back. So that, that, that's a really good one. It's really worth clearing out all those planes and that, that one little fucking uh, group. So this part's not too hard, but it does get kind of aggressive. You want to take out all these ground vehicles pretty quick and kind of sweep left to right and take everything out. If you have lasers, it makes it a lot easier. Use some homing missiles if uh, you need to clear shit out a little bit. If it's getting a little bit too aggressive, don't be afraid to use a few homing missiles. I don't recommend using them for no reason because it's good to save them for harder parts. But uh, you don't have to be super stingy. I think they might max out at 8 or some shit. I'm not sure. But... It's good to use them every once in a while. It's not the kind of thing where you want to save them for the whole game and then, you know, you beat the game and you never ended up using them because they can definitely help. I try to save most of my shit for bosses, which includes the homing missiles and the the uh, screen clearing bombs. I try to save all that shit for bosses most of the time, but I do use some homing missiles, you know, to try to clear shit out. Now, last resort, I'll use a screen clearing bomb, like if I'm really, really in a bad situation and the homing missiles aren't getting shit off my ass fast enough, then I might use a, a screen clearing bomb. But it's like a last resort for me during the actual stages. I really try to save it up if I can. But at the same time, I'd rather use a bomb or some homing missiles than lose a life. So you got to have the order of your priorities kind of mapped out. You know, it helps to have kind of a plan with that and stick to it. Now I have this super powerful weapon that only lasts about 15 seconds. With those big planes, what they do is they shoot 
I fucked it up there, but they shoot like a wide shot where you can just stay in the middle and, and, and shoot them from below. But then after a few wide shots, they do a straight shot right down, straight down the middle. And then they go back to the wide shots again. So you want to kind of zigzag around that middle shot and, and then go back to the center. Um, you'll see me do it sometimes when I actually did it right, but I kind of fucked it up there. So I did lose my laser, unfortunately, at this point. So you just got to make do with what you got. But it's, 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 it's definitely less than ideal. But at least I still have four lives. And I may be able to get another one-up off of points. There's definitely a one-up that I'm going to be able to pick up later. I think in the final stage. So very similar to some of the other bosses. This kind of reminds me, I think I fought this boss already two other times, if I remember right. Um, I seem to be seeing this fucking thing a lot, but it's a little bit different each time. But, you know, it, just, it does look the same, pretty much. But this is the same configuration. Same thing with the cannon. Same pattern with the cannon. It's just that now it has, like, much more aggressive attacks, like this stream of missiles. You can clear out some of those missiles with your regular shots if you have, like, like this gun right here with the little missiles. It'll clear out a lot of them and keep you from getting hit. But if not, you want to move to the side as it sweeps, you know, left to right. But it can be tricky. You want to kind of zigzag in and out of those bullets and kind of move with the sweeping of the, uh, the lasers. You know, because if you don't have the right shot, you won't be able to block those missiles. Those missile streams, you just have to get out of the way. So it's going to depend what weapon you have. But for this part, you kind of just zigzag as you see me doing. But it gets harder when the stream comes out, you may need to move, depending on what weapon you have. Um, I would have kept my lasers, but I don't know how well the lasers work against those streams. Now with these homing missiles, see what happened? I was at the bottom of the screen, and I thought I was safe, but they will come back and hit you. So just be aware that they're really fast and aggressive, and try to clear them out. Maybe use your screen-clearing bomb when that attack comes through, or um, you know, use some homing missiles to try to block those missiles. I didn't really have that part down too well. But there's a few ways you can probably deal with that. So I'm already down to two lives, so now I'm really not doing too well. But I was able to save the run on this final stage. I believe this next stage is the final stage. And I was able to save my fucking ass. So we'll see how I bring this shit back. So again, I have a shitty weapon again. And it's not, it's not really that shitty, but it's not this. Now I have the laser back. But I got to get another laser power up to get, get it to full power. So I'm going to try to struggle to get that back. Because I really want that for the last boss. And I was able to bring it to the last boss. So that helped. But um... I wasn't able to keep it for very long, though, I don't think. I think I died pretty fast. I'm not sure if I retrieved it, but we'll see. So take out these groups, and here's a one-up right here. Get that one up. Use some homing missiles if you have to, but make sure you grab that one up. That's like, that's pretty essential. Now, here I fucked it up and got the wrong weapon, so now I'm going to be fighting again to try to get my laser back and to power it up, but uh, we'll see what happens with that. Try to kill these things at point blank, because if you can get that 1,500 that I'm about to get, not about to get, but it's the next score that I'm going to get to get a 1-up. If I get that, I can get another life, too, so that's what I'm going to end up doing. I believe I got my lives up to 4 by getting another 1-up off of points. So, the way I'm getting points, the way I'm racking up the points is trying to kill stuff at point blank range to get the multipliers if I can. Um, I'm not trying to get myself killed to do it. But I'm, I'm trying to do it when I can do it reasonably. You know, I didn't have a ton of practice with the game, like I said. It, it really only took under an hour to beat, but, you know, one of my runs did crash, so it ended up taking like an hour and 14 minutes. Try to kill these guys at point blank if you can. But if you don't have the right weapon, it's hard to do that. Uh, I didn't have the lasers, so that kind of fucked me. Get the health when you need it. Try to stay alive. Try to, try to bring at least, you know, three or four lives to the final boss if you can. It just makes shit a lot easier. Now, I have a, a general strat for the final boss, but it's still going to be hard. So, yeah, right now I'm at three. What I'm trying to do now is I want to get that 1,500, that 1,500,000 uh, 1, points is what I'm trying to do. So, I'm not being, like, super aggressive with the close range kills, but I'm, I'm hoping I can get up to 500,000 before the boss... I don't think there's any more one-ups that you're going to grab from enemies or anything. But try to rack up some points if you can with those close-range kills if you need it. Now, if your score's not anywhere near the next 500,000, like if you're like 300 or 400,000 points off the next one-up, then uh, don't bother playing extra aggressive to get more points. 
because you know it's just going to put you more at risk and you're going to have to want to conserve your health and have some lives for the final boss so it kind of depends on what your situation is you can see right now I'm almost losing my third life my health is pretty low so if you got to use some screen clearing bombs or homing or whatever just keep yourself alive prioritize staying alive even if you got to waste your bombs you know first I use the homing missiles but if that's not covering my ass then I start using the big bombs before I, before I want to sacrifice an entire life. Because you can do a lot of damage on a full life. Especially if you get you know full health. So now I finally get the laser back. And I think I'm able to get it fully powered up. If I remember right. Don't worry about grabbing all those medals and shit. Really. Especially at this final stage. Don't even fuck with the medals. You know. No, no point. See I got some health back. By waiting for the bomb to turn into a, uh, a health power up. So be patient. You know, let them, let them turn to the next... Uh, you get a few cycles at least before the power-up is going to leave the screen. I don't know if the power-ups do leave the screen. I assume they do. I just don't usually wait around to find out. But you'll get a few cycles of them turning into different things before, you know, you lose an opportunity to get it. So don't, don't be in a huge rush. Wait a little while and get, the, uh, get what you need. So now I finally got my one-up off a of point. So here I am with four lives now. So it's starting to look a lot better at this point. Got my lasers. Not sure if I fully powered them up. I, I don't think I did yet. So this is another temporary weapon. Get that so you can clear these guys out faster. Because they're going to throw a bunch of a bunch of mid-sized enemies at you that take a lot of shots. That's why they give you that, that powerful weapon that lasts like, what, 15, 20 seconds. So they give you that for a little while. And the purpose, obviously, is so you can clear out these big enemies as fast as possible. So uh, try to prioritize them so they don't linger on screen and destroy you. You know, because once you're back to your regular weapons again, it's going to be harder to clear out the big guys. So try to utilize that 15 to 20 seconds with the power weapon and really destroy that shit. So here I'm trying to get the laser, I think. So get the laser, and I'm trying to get the health. I think I'm trying to get both right now. Health, and I should be waiting for the laser. And there I go, I got it. Now it was a bit of a fight there. That was getting pretty intense to grab both things that I needed, but you see I waited. And that's how I was, you know, that's a big part of how I was able to turn the run around, uh, you know, aside from getting the lives, but I think it helped that I also got that stuff. Uh, though I had two lives remaining, I probably could have bullshitted my way through um, without that stuff. But, you know, I didn't know what to expect. I figured the last boss was going to be a, a fucking pain in the ass uh, because I got to him once already and, and failed my run because of this guy. So here he is, final boss, and this is it. So what I like to do is start off on the left side and take out all the shit on the wing first. So here you see I fucked up immediately. Um, I'm going to grab my laser again though because I want to keep that. And prioritize one side, one wing at a time. So I start on the left side and I want to clean that left wing. See those holes in the left wing? Two holes in the left wing? That's a good start. Now I'm moving over to the right wing. And um, you're going to see me trying to clear that out. I think there's three parts to each wing to take out. But you see I mainly took those two. And then I kind of move... Now I'm moving to the middle. Now I can focus all my attention to the middle of the final boss. See, and it wasn't that bad. Um, use your bombs to, to finish it off. It does get pretty wild. I was doing some pretty good dodging. Didn't expect those thrusters to come out. That threw me off. I didn't know those thrusters could shoot lasers. Now I know. But uh, it's getting a little messy here. But, I mean, it wasn't too bad. You know what I mean? I think with the strategy of clearing out, you know, clearing out the wings first and then going for the center, I think that saved my ass because when I first got to this, I wanted to just fucking go straight for the kill. So, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to just take out the middle because I figured that's going to kill the whole thing, and I'm ignoring the wings. Well, you, you know, obviously that didn't work out too well. But, I, of course, I only had one life, so I couldn't really experiment too much. But uh, getting there with four lives helped a lot. Getting there with the double laser helped a little bit. I was able to grab the laser again and, and continue to use it after I died, so that I think that helped. But I think the biggest thing was taking out, you know, starting with the wing and taking off a few of the turrets first, and then moving to the other wing, take out at least two of the turrets on the other wing, and then you know it, it's a lot easier to take out the middle because if you don't take, if you just go straight to the middle like I did, um, you end up with a fuck fest in the middle of the screen. There's just so many bullets and shit busting out at all different time intervals, and it's a big fucking mess if you try to do what I did initially. And it's just going to be much, much harder. I mean, I'm sure it's possible, but maybe if you're doing a speed run and you got the game, you know, mastered. But um, if you just want to beat it, I would say take it, take it in a few steps like I did. And that's about it. I'm going to be posting up a review of this game 
very soon. So if you have any questions, let me know. And thanks for watching.